Hi, welcome to the second part of the All About the Rapture series, where we will talk all about the rapture. Now, for those of you that watched the first part, thank you, because that's prerequisite to watching the second part. For those of you that didn't, please go find it somewhere over wherever it is and watch it. Now, in the first part, spoiler alert, we talked about something. We talked about Jesus. So not something, but someone. I love this man who is God. Jesus. He he gave himself up for us. And understand he went to the cross for us. Not not just to take the sin of the world. He did that. We like that is not a removable part. But he had perfect relationship for all eternity past with the Father. A perfect it's just he always looked down on Jesus. The Father always looked down on Jesus with this reality of, you are my son in whom I am well pleased. And they always had this dynamic, this relationship going on. And then Jesus came to Gethsemane when he was about to face the cross. And he prayed and asked, Father, if it is possible that this cup may be passed from me, Please do it. You are capable of all things, Father. But not my will, but your will be done. And this cup wasn't just referring to taking the sin on the whole world, though that was terrible, and to the beating and the rejection. But I believe the thing that distressed him to the point of sweating blood and tears was the fact that he would have to face separation with him whom he never had separation from. Because of sin being on him, the father would have to look away at his son. And that would break the son's heart. And what do we see? Jesus on the cross. Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's how much he cared about us. That's how much he loved us. So what does this have to do with the rapture? I promise it all ties together. But it's very important to understand this. Because this is a picture of Jesus' desire for you. Jesus said in the prayer right before he went to go to the cross. He said, Father, I desire that they be with me where I am. Us. He wants us with him. He wants to be one with us. He wants to be close with us. And so that brings me to the second part of this series. <clears throat> I have the printout of the blog. That's what I'm using for notes. I don't have some plan. I'm just refreshing my memory of the blog because I've written the, the whole eight parts, main parts of this series already. And so it was quite a while ago that I actually wrote this material. But it's in me. Those my beautiful kids in the background. Hi, girls. Hi, David. Oh, you look so tired. Dad. Yes. Abigail. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The Father is very adamant about answering every request in the prayer that Jesus gave right before he died. And um, we're going to revisit the prayer a couple of times in this series. But for now, I want to answer some specific questions. See, Jesus is our bridegroom. Jesus was referred to as bridegroom by John the Baptist and by himself. When the question about fasting, Jesus said, 
my disciples don't fast right now because their bridegroom is with them. When the bridegroom is gone, then they will fast. And so that's why we as Christians now fast. Jesus was talking about himself. Or John referred to himself as a friend of the bridegroom. And he was talking about Jesus. And he said, Jesus must become greater and I must become less. He's referred to as a bridegroom there twice. Jesus is our bridegroom. He refers to his church as a bride right, throughout the scripture. <clears throat> now, questions. Jesus is our... Okay, I'm just going to read this one section because it's just perfect the way it is. Like, you should read the blog instead of watching my face talk about it. Jesus is our bridegroom who has went away. Now is the time that we fast and pray, awaiting his return. It is now in his absence that we mourn, so to speak. What is the purpose of Jesus' going away? Why didn't he just come and liberate Israel in his first coming like everyone thought he was going to do? And so have his bride and be with him then. Since he so longs to be with us. If he so longs to be with us, why didn't he just be with us? What is the purpose of this time that we now spend in this broken, painful, fallen world? As brothers and sisters, this world sucks sometimes. It hurts. There's pain. There's financial struggle. There's blah, 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 blah. All sorts of crap that we got to face. What is the point? <laughs> How can God possibly be good if he lets us go through this? Well... You know, to answer that, I would like to tell a little story about Jewish culture. After all, Jesus is a Jew. So I hope you love the Jews. Because the whole Christian faith is about falling in love with a Jew. <laughs> in Jewish culture, if you wanted to marry someone, usually... You would go and you would pay the father of the bride a bride price. And then you would be betrothed, during which time you would not live together, you wouldn't have sex together. But a betrothal was so serious and binding that you would have to present her with a certificate of divorce to get out of it. You would actually still have to go through a divorce proceeding. It's kind of like our engagement now, except for serious and binding. And... After paying that bride price, the bridegroom, the man to be wed, would go and start preparing the place that him and his bride would live thereafter. And then the bride would start to make herself ready. She would get ready. She would Sometimes she would undergo beauty treatments and she would learn more of the skills and fine-tuned skills that she would need to be a good wife, a good bride to her husband. And then after that time, there would be a wedding, a glorious wedding. And I'm oversimplifying this. There's teachings out there that you can get more in depth. I'm not trying to do an hour-long teaching on something that very well deserves an hour-long teaching. But so, that's kind of how Jewish culture, Jesus was and is and will always be a Jew. And so he paid that price we were talking about on the cross. He paid that price as a bride price for me and you and all of us broken, fallen people. And now he went to go prepare a place for us. He talked. He said it in the Last Supper on Thursday night before he was crucified. He said it. I go to prepare a place for you. And my father taught there is many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. So, he's preparing a place for us. What does that make us to do? What are we to do now as the bride? We are to be making ourselves ready, beautifying ourselves. And there's a lot of scripture on this. And I encourage you to search it out. You can start by reading the blog where I quote a lot more scripture than I'm talking about here. <laughs> but alas, I know people are more likely to watch a video than read a blog. 
<clears throat> in Ephesians, Paul teaches on marriage. But then he says, this is profound. This is a mystery. It's crazy. Because I'm talking about Christ and his church. Not just husband and wife, but Christ and his church. He teaches. That teaching on marriage is about Christ and his church. Paul directly relates our relationship with Jesus as to that as a husband and wife. He And... He refers to Jesus in the first chapter of Ephesians as Beloved. He gives him the title Beloved, which is fitting because in the Song of Songs, Solomon, who is the writer of the Song of Songs, is known as Beloved. And um, Song of Solomon is a book that shows the beauty of married love. And Paul makes the argument that husbands and wives, that relationship is the same or very similar to that of the relationship between Jesus and his church. And so that shows us that if Song Songs is about marriage, it can also be applied to our relationship with Jesus. And as it's done, it is revealed so clearly, and, and Jesus referred to himself as a bridegroom. And so I encourage you to read Song of Songs. Study that book and talk to Jesus about it and realize that the way that Solomon felt about the Shulamite woman is the way that Jesus feels about you and me. This fat guy, this weird guy in a pink shirt, or listening under some, oh, look at those antennas, they look like horns above my head, blah, 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 blah. I'm a weirdo, and he loves me, he cares about me, and he loves me, and all my weird quirkiness, he loves you, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm gonna close off this section. Is that these are very important to understanding. They, these first few series are very important to understanding the rapture. Because if we don't understand what Jesus did and how he feels about us and how he is a bridegroom coming for his bride. And the other things that we're going to talk about in these next few parts, we won't understand. The end times of the rapture or any of it. Intimacy is the most important. It's the first thing we need to know and establish and understand. And we need to understand why suffering in the world happens. Why we're allowed to face it. What's its purpose? That's what we'll talk about in the third part. So, anyways. Listen to this. This is what Jesus thinks of you. What he thinks of me. <laughs> My beloved speaks and says to me, this is this invitation. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. You are altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. Come with me, my bride. Come with me. You have captivated my heart, my sister, my bride. You have captivated my heart with one glance of your eyes. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my bride. How much better is your love than wine? He thinks of you that way. He thinks you are beautiful. This is beautiful. It says you're all together lovely. There's no flaw in you. That's how Jesus sees you. He looks at you. He doesn't hold your sin against you. Do you know that? When you repent, you come to him and he washes you. With his blood, he renews you. And you're beautiful to him. Well, I shall. I need to go talk to my kids.
<laughs> I'm a daddy. I'm having another baby in a couple days. And don't forget about the blog. Friday at 6 a.m. Part 4 will release. Bye-bye.